I just rolled up to the west gate of Yellowstone. They plow the road every spring right before they open. And for a very small window of time, only bikes are allowed inside the park. I mean, that sounds awesome. If I can be in Yellowstone and be on a bike and not have to deal with snowmobiles or cars, that's a dream come true. Plus there won't be any crowds or there shouldn't be any crowds because how many people are willing to ride their bike in Yellowstone in 20 degree weather? My goal today is to ride the 50 or so miles to the only campground that's open in the park and that's Mammoth Springs. I would love to see a bear from a distance or with a hot geyser in between me and the bear because I don't want to become a skin wrapped human sausage for a bear looking for a snack. I'm gonna get really, I'm gonna put all my clothes on so I can deal with this cold. Then I'm gonna set up my trailer and bike and I gotta get ready before someone comes and tells me I can't park here. This is quite a lovely sight to behold. These signs are a positive indication of what to expect. This is sweet. No one. I keep looking for cars, but there's no need. This is awesome. Not a single person. Not a single RV. Gone is the laughter of children. Gone is the honking of horns. The idle engines waiting for the animals to pass. Gone are the crowds of Chinese people. Gone are all of the elements of Yellowstone that keep me away from Yellowstone. The only thing here so far is me. So this is perfect. That's a pretty great sign. Warning people not to jump into the steaming, boiling geyser. I love how the mom's freaking out and the dad's just done with the kid's shit. I'm here at Norris Geyser Basin to take in some of the geyser life. So far, I haven't been disappointed. 10 minutes of walking and I'm just, I'm just stumbling into geysers. They're everywhere. What a sad geyser. This old geyser must be on its way out. All the young geysers are spewing like three, four times a minute. This geyser's lucky if he gets one spew a year. Really more of a steam vent than a geyser, I guess. If you had some wrinkly clothes, you could bring them here and just hold them over that vent with a long stick and get the wrinkles out. You know, if you had a business meeting or something nearby. These boardwalks are completely empty. You come here in the summer and you'll be fighting for a view of the geysers. Unless the geyser is like propelling someone or something into the air, I'm not interested in more geysers. Is there a point at which you can reach saturation with geyser viewing? I now know the answer is yes, there is a point and I've reached that point. I've got 21 more miles to go. I have a lot of uh, biking to do. Well, I made it to Mammoth Springs. Got here, I set up my tent, got my campsite. Then, unfortunately, <clears throat> I discovered there were no restaurants open in this little town. 
So I went to the general store and bought a ginormous burrito. And if I don't get some kind of digestive issue from that burrito, it'll be a miracle. I'm gonna sit up here until the sun goes down and then I'm gonna go back to my tent and wake up in the morning and do this all over again. Last night I slept like shit because a bunch of hillbillies were yelling at each other until about one in the morning. Something about $58 or $100 and about money. And then just campgrounds suck in general because people are constantly driving in and out. So I'm just gonna get up because what's the point? All right, I've got my bike clothes on. And now I'm going to emerge from my tent like a beautiful butterfly emerging from his cocoon. I'm whispering because I'm trying to show my fellow campers the courtesy they didn't show me last night when they spent all night listening to music and yelling at each other. What I'm saying is I'm better than them. I'm also whispering because I don't want people to hear me talking to myself in this single man tent because then they'll think I'm insane, which I'm not. Anyway, time to back up camp. These hills aren't really that steep. But like I said, even with a small incline, with a trailer, it can be savage. But good news is, it's not actually that cold. A Russian might even be out here with his shirt off. I've cleared the section with cars, and I'm back into the uh, supposedly car-free zone. <sighs> My toes are frigid though. It's like five popsicles on, on the end of a big frozen slab of meat. We've got an early morning bison jam. You know, just a handful of bison in the road. They don't get off the road. They just keep running down it. And I can't pass them, because bison can be super aggressive. And I don't want to get my bike destroyed or get rammed. Every now and then though, they just stop and turn around and look at me like, what, you gonna pass, bro? So I just gotta keep falling behind them as they shit every 50 yards and wait until finally they get the wherewithal to just get the freak off the road, an opportunity has appeared. If that is a pull through, I, maybe I can pass them. So I got past my Buffalo roadblock, onward and upward. I'm sure that on any given summer day, this parking lot is packed with cars and screaming kids and parents yelling at those kids to get off of that or don't climb up there. But today, it's just me. At the end of these things, I'm always so hungry. I don't really give a shit about talking. 
I just want to go get something to eat. I've got everything packed up. I'm gonna change out of the spandex. But the morning was so great. There was nobody on the road. Not, no cars, no bikes. The road was clear up until I got to Norris Geyser and then things got crowded. All, all in all, it was, it was great. You know, if you've got a bike and some time to spare, come up here and do it. Yeah, now I'm 